Hey everybody, in this video, what I would like to do is show you how to determine the crossover point for compression drivers. And then this would be for audiophile use, um, not for live sound or anything. This is trying to get the best sound quality you possibly can from your compression driver. And so what I'm using right now is a very popular compression driver made by BNC, the DE250. And so I have it connected to my DATS V2 speaker tester, which gives me the impedance data and the phase response. And then here I have my uh, 10 inch diameter LeCliche horn that I make. And so I'm just gonna set it on there and it's, it just needs to be aligned when I set it on there. If I can get the, the wood aligned. There's alignment pins there, so. Okay, so I'm gonna play some music through this as well. And you can hear yourself the different crossover points that I'm gonna select. Now, I did my acoustical measurement using the Dayton UMM6 mic, and so I just placed it deep in the throat, right around there. And so I really wanted to just to find out a more time, time domain measurement aspect, just to show you some of the points that I'm trying to make. Okay, so here's the, here's the impedance curve. And so you can see here we have two peaks, one at 1.8 and one at 700 hertz. And so for me, what I would do is I would pick a crossover point of around 2.2 kilohertz. And I can explain that in a bit, but you can see the phase response is nice and clean, but below that you get a correlation um, between these resonances and also with the phase response. So um, let's go and look at REW. I did some acoustical measurements with, with the Dayton mic. And so you can see here, it's nice flat response uh, above 2.2, but then we have a resonance here that's actually showing up in our frequency response. So this is a frequency domain measurement. And so there's, there's two types of measurements. There's frequency and time domain. So we can see here, we also have a peak at 700 Hertz. And so the frequency response graph is actually simply showing us um, symptoms of something that's happening in the time domain. Time domain being either waterfall plot or spectrogram, and also impulse response would be a time domain measurement. So I like to use the spectrogram. And so you can actually see here at 1.8 kilohertz, we have significant stored energy uh, in the time domain. And then also again, uh, you can see how the phase uh, response is being affected. And then at 800 hertz, we have uh, uh, quite significant uh, resonance as well. So I'm going to show you some of the control settings that I have for spectrogram. I prefer Wavelet. So Wavelet is actually showing you instead of milliseconds in the time time axis, it's actually showing cycles. So uh, cycles or other people like to call them modulations. So by one modulation, the driver should be uh, completely decayed. Otherwise, it's going to start to bleed through into the next cycle of the sound. Okay, so like for example, at one kilohertz, um, the the wavelength that where is it here? The wavelength at one kilohertz is is um, one millisecond, but um, we have it set to wavelet, so it's not showing milliseconds here. It's showing cycles. So the target would be, um, and I have the the scale range set to 25 dB. So if it's below 25 dB, it simply turns to purple. Okay, so the 25 dB is actually a standard uh, decibel scale for waterfall plots and spectrograms and burst decay plots and, and the like. So, all right, so what I wanna do is to further um, demonstrate my point is to actually play some music and you can hear, I have, I'm recording this with an iPhone XR and you should be able to hear the difference in the crossover point between 2.2 kilohertz and 1.8, um, where if we have it at 1.8, we're actually introducing this uh, resonance into the into the sound, and based on this graph here, that should not be something that would be subjectively pleasurable. It would actually have a kind of a, a resonance sound, a harsh sound to it because of the phase anomalies that we're seeing in in the uh, in the in the impedance curve plot here. Okay, so what I've done to demonstrate this is I've simply put aggressive EQ on the driver and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up 1.8 while I'm playing music. And to further make my point, this is a subtle subtle difference um, and it's not actually quite noticeable 
with certain types of music. For example, if you're playing electronic music where there's a lot of phase irregularities itself in the music, then you're not going to really notice it too much. But if you play something where we, like for example, female vocal. Female vocal region is right around 1.8 kilohertz. So it should be something that we can detect when we're playing female vocals. And so what I expect is it to come across as being somewhat harsh. Um, and it's not, it would probably be acceptable in a pro audio type application, like a live sound type application. But for uh, an audiophile uh, listening application, then to me that it would not be acceptable. So to prove that, I'm going to play some music. And this this song here, um, actually by FKA Twigs, it's it's very um, synthesized sound, and so you can not really tell when I bring in the 1.8. Okay, so I'm going to bring in the 1.8. I'll bring the song back. So I'm going to take away 1.8. So you can kind of tell that it sounds a little cleaner. Okay, so next I'm going to switch to something with female vocals. So Emily Pinkerton, Beautiful Dress. I'm going to skip right to the part where there's vocals. Going to introduce 1.8. I'm going to take away Bring in 1.8. Okay, so that I hope um, probably listen to it with a set of headphones, and uh, hopefully you'll get a good sense of what uh, that's going to sound like when you're bringing in that 1.8 uh, resonance into the sound. Now there are ways of dealing with that resonance um, through the passive crossover, but in my experience, you can only deal with maybe 20 to 30 percent of 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 this. Maybe bringing it back one cycle, but you're really not going to be able to completely eliminate it. Okay, so I hope that helps you understand both the frequency domain and time domain aspects when evaluating the best uh, crossover point for an audiophile uh, speaker application. Thanks, and uh, take care.